Hello everyone, I'm Megan Sullivan and welcome to my review of Rune Factory 3 Special, developed by Marvelous and published by Xseed for the Nintendo Switch. Full disclosure, a review code was provided. By the way, you know the drill, if you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe and click that little bell for updates and I'll keep bringing you all the gaming goodness. Thank you! Now, I know that 2023 is a jam-packed year for games, but hear me out. Rune Factory 3 Special is arguably the happiest and most feel-good game of 2023, and if you love cozy games or need a break from giant open-world titles, Rune Factory definitely deserves your time. It's like a big, warm hug, and quite frankly, I needed one of those. This charming merry-go-round of farming, fishing, fighting, foraging, and flirting put a big grin on my face for over 30 hours. I was never bored, I was never frustrated, I was never sad, and I was always having a good time. But let me explain why. So the premise of Rune Factory 3 is delightfully simple. The hero of the story, that's you, wakes up in a small village with amnesia, because of course he does, and discovers he is half human, half monster. In order to learn more about his mysterious past, he must befriend the locals and collect memory orbs found in seasonal dungeons divided into spring, summer, fall, and winter. Meanwhile, to thank the villagers for letting him stay in a giant treehouse with two enormous plots of farmable land, your hero will help the villagers solve their problems by taking on requests, listening to their stories, trying to reconcile them with their monsterly neighbors, and eventually befriending or even beguiling them. And this starts a wonderfully satisfying gameplay loop, where activities are divided up into exploration, socializing, crafting, and farming, all of which effortlessly tie into each other. And I love how you're constantly rewarded for doing just about anything that requires skill. I'm serious. Going for a walk around town? Your walking skill will go up. Feeling hungry? Stuff your face and your eating skills will improve. Have a favorite weapon in battle? You'll wield it better the more you use it. Fishing, farming, foraging, no matter what you're doing, the more you do it, the better you get, and the more your character stats will increase, which is such a great feeling. But what I love even more about Rune Factory is that every gameplay mechanic has a clear and concise purpose, and it's fun. Let's start with farming. Since Rune Factory is a Harvest Moon spin-off, of course it has a fun farming component. Every day, your hero will till the earth, plant seeds, water the crops, inspect and improve the soil for better produce, and finally, harvest the crops, all with a few quick taps of a button. You can then sell your produce for cash, which can be used to either buy better farming equipment that make your tasks go by even faster, or home decor that allow you to cook meals, forge weapons and armor, or craft health potions all of which can be sold for more money or equipped to help you on your sojourns into dungeons. Other chill activities that let you survive off the land include an addictive fishing minigame, mining ore by hitting rocks with a satisfying smack of a hammer, and plucking weeds out of your garden that can then be turned into health and stamina potions, and you need both types of potions to survive the dungeons that corner the village on all four sides. Now when I say dungeons, what I really mean is that you'll be exploring environments bursting with colorful flora and teeming with adorable, and I do mean adorable, fauna. Monsters in this game are just so cute, and it's so sweet that you don't actually kill anything in Rune Factory, you just boop monsters with your weapon of choice or fight them bare knuckled in your monster form and send them back to the forest of beginnings. But you don't have to fight these cuties. You can actually try to befriend monsters by presenting them with food or items. Once you acquire a monster friend, you can then ride them around town to reach a destination faster, have them accompany you on your adventures where they'll fight alongside you and point out any hidden treasure nearby, or put them to work on your farm, leaving you with more free time to explore. Put them in a barn, and you can even collect eggs, milk, and wool from them, which can be crafted into all sorts of valuable commodities that will help you on your travels. Friendship is magic, but sometimes I admit it's better to do battle so you can get valuable monster drops that will also help you craft better items or can be used to complete missions given to you by the local townsfolk. Combat is very simple, straightforward, and utterly addicting. Monsters will either melee you or fight from afar, and each type of monster has their own distinct attack pattern. Luckily, you have plenty of weapon choices to help you dispense gentle justice. Swords, spears, staves, daggers, hammers, axes, you name it, it's there, and sometimes come with an elemental affiliation of water, fire, wind, etc. And if you find yourself in a fight with the wrong type of weapon, no problem. You can always pause the action and swap out equipment at any time. Or, and this is useful in the new and pleasantly challenging hell difficulty mode, which is challenging but not like souls born challenging, 
Just use a convenient fast travel spell to get yourself out of a jam. The action flows quickly and smoothly, which makes picking a fight fun. And there's more fun to be had off the battlefield, because once you're finished exploring, it's time to go back to the farm to take stock of your winnings and then head into town to do some socializing. I love getting to know the friendly locals in Rune Factory 3 Special. They're an eclectic group with their own backstories and preferences, and I enjoy talking to them on a daily basis in order to get to know them better. I like the mysterious Raven, the strange Sophia who says the opposite of what she means, the overly enthusiastic artist Daria, and the sweet and caring Shara. And unlike Harvest Moon, these characters get plenty of storylines that make you feel like spending time with them is worthwhile because you hear something new pretty consistently. Another bonus is that the village is small, charming, and easy to navigate, plus there's always something going on in town. The locals hold regular festivals featuring fun and rewarding mini games where you can win loaves of specialty breads that will teach you new cooking and crafting recipes. From morning until midnight, there's always something to do in Rune Factory 3 Special, and I never got bored with my cycle of forging and fishing and fighting and flirting. Which reminds me, spoiler alert, you do have to eventually date someone to advance the story, and no, unfortunately, there are no male partners in the game since this is an earlier Rune Factory title. But don't worry, you have 11 bachelorettes to choose from, so you have plenty of dating options. And the cutscenes with your crush are pretty cute. Plus, there's a bonus newlywed mode that unlocks at the end of the game and lets you spend more time with your beloved. Now, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I didn't get a chance to tinker in this mode, but the very tiny bit I've seen looks very, very cute. But having a spouse isn't just cute. After you start getting close to people, you can invite them to accompany you into dungeons, which is hugely beneficial when you're up against a crowd of tough but still cute baddies. Which brings me back to what I was saying before. Everything has a clear and concise purpose. Exploration not only advances the story, but gives you a chance to collect valuable items. These items can be crafted into weapons to help you explore or tools to help you on your farm. Your farming activities will help you grow food that can be eaten to replenish your health and stamina during exploration, or food can be used to befriend the local monsters and villagers who will help you with both your farming and fighting needs. Heck, you can even buy magic seeds to help you fight and forage your way through the story. Rune Factory 3 Special is determined to make sure you have a good experience. With that said, are there any downsides to Rune Factory 3 Special? Well, I did notice some frame rate stuttering. I gave the local blacksmith a rare piece of ore once and it wasn't acknowledged for some reason. And occasionally my farm workers would stare blankly into the void when they were supposed to be planting seeds, although that might be a feature, not a bug. So other than that, it was mostly smooth sailing. This is a really good remaster that looks good in both docked and handheld mode. I especially like the improvements to the 3D character models, they're no longer the grainy blocky mess of the original 2009 Nintendo DS version of the game, and the sweet and catchy music sounds better than ever. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that Rune Factory 3 Special is a cheerful, fun experience that's worth your time if you need a cozy game or just a break from bigger, more challenging digital experiences. It doesn't introduce anything new or revolutionary, but its entertaining gameplay loop and penchant for showering you with rewards for doing the most basic things makes it a joy to play. Have you played it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you later.